From now, Utah police will be giving an update on the search for a missing college student. Salt Lake City detectives searching a home last night near the park where Mackenzie Luak was last seen more than a week ago, towing a car and taking bags of evidence from the scene. Joining us now, Steve Rogers, retired lieutenant detective for the Nutley, New Jersey Police Department and a former member of the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force and Heather Hansen, a trial attorney. Steve, with that resume, I'll start with you first. <laughs> Uh, tell us what you know about what we're learning now about how this investigation is proceeding and what are they looking for? Well, obviously, the police have enough evidence to have charged them with uh, hindering and hampering with evidence. The problem that we're facing... Charge who? I think he's talking about the Connecticut case. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm, uh, uh, I was talking about the other okay, case. Okay, so we'll uh, get to Connecticut let's, let's first. First to, to Utah. Yeah. So okay. they don't, we don't know who they're no, targeting we don't. here. Uh, they do have, uh, they executed search warrants on the house. Okay, they're looking, uh, I believe there was something going on mm -hmm. with regard to someone who uh, smelt an odor from that area. So they would bring the dogs in and they're checking for forensics evidence in the house. But I, I've got to tell you, the, the issue here is, and what is on my mind is, is she... Le did she leave on her own uh, volition? Did she just simply want to disappear and, and not want to be bothered with anyone? Considering they didn't know much about the car um, that she disappeared in that night, which she was last seen getting dropped off and she, get in, she got in, she got in with her purse. They didn't know much about the description of the car, but they towed a car. Does that tell us then that this could ultimately be the person? You know what, Sandra, I think that they've done a lot of investigation behind the scenes. They had things like her phone. They knew that she had been with the lift. She, they knew that she had been dropped off at that park. And I think that they have now combined all of that information and narrowed in on this home. Whether it's the Airbnb that's at the bottom of the home or the people that own the home, we know now that they must have enough evidence to perhaps even be announcing an arrest this afternoon. And we also know that there was some sort of fire that may have led to some DNA evidence. So though I, you know, at first I agree that I thought maybe that she had disappeared. If there's DNA evidence to be found with respect to this fire, the investigators will be in much better shape. And the investigators it, saying obviously we're treating this with a high degree of care. Given the nature of the, the case, we don't want to make any mistakes. We are also learning about some of her texting activity. She was texting with someone they, they've discovered prior to her disappearance. They are now talking with that person, yes. but that person is not considered a suspect. But the dating history has come into play here as well. Yes, Sandra, and the time Timeline is very, very important. Dating history is important because uh, she could have had a lot of communication with a particular person or a couple of people before uh, she even took that trip uh, to the funeral. Uh, but I, uh, as Heather said, the DNA that they get from that house or from that car is going to be, I think, a turning point in this investigation. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what that dating history is. She had a she had been on some of the dating apps, and we know that sometimes those can be less uh, reliable than perhaps meeting someone face to face and that type of thing. So it's going to be interesting to see whether or not there's some sort of connection there. They are desperate for any clues, any tips right now. We'll see if we get an update on that at the top of the hour. Moving on now, <laughs> back to Connecticut, New Canaan, Connecticut, uh, where the attorney for Fotis Dulos made an interesting defense in his case yesterday that uh, that possibly his his wife, he is the estranged husband of Jennifer Dulos, mother of five, who's gone missing now for weeks, that possibly she uh, disappeared in a revenge suicide plot where somehow she framed him. Uh, he compared it to Gone Girl. Yeah, well, Heather and I had this discussion earlier, and it looks like he's trying, as you said, Heather, and I give you credit for this, trying to influence the jury, bring reasonable doubt in the minds of the jury. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that these two individuals are now uh, charged with tampering with evidence. The question is, uh, how much do the police have with regard to that tampering? They're gonna, the prosecution is going to have a very difficult time connecting dots, leading to charging them with uh, murder or... or Janice Billboard or, was here and made a very interesting point the other day. She said, Heather, they, the defense doesn't need to do this. He's not charged with murder. So no. why are they coming up with this theory? No, it's a, she makes a great point. She's a good friend of mine. And I do think that there's there's the concern that it's ultimately going to be a murder investigation. He's also said, he being the attorney for the defendant, has said that he wants to push this case to trial in August. It's almost as if he's anticipating some other issues here, Sandra. And we know that there's a potential for that. With all of the DNA that was found in those trash bags that, they, that he and his girlfriend got rid of, that's 
certainly starts to create, and I'm sure Steve would agree with this, uh, the beginnings of an, a murder investigation. Yeah. You know, it's only the start now. And I, I think last time that I was here, we talked about the fact that I think that investigators are talking to the girlfriend and saying, do you want to give us some information here that would lead for you to have a better deal? Remember we talked earlier yes. in the week, they're going to flip. Somebody's going to flip. And as you said, they're going to go after the girlfriend, in my view. You suggested the girlfriend. Yes. He's now asking to visit the girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. But did you uh, see that she then responded and said, I don't want to see him, which again leads me to think that perhaps she may flip. she's the good. Yeah. And that would make sense. So much we still don't know there. And the search continues on, on both of those fronts, both cases. For the bodies. And the Utah police will not release all that they have. They don't want to compromise the investigation. And I agree with you, Heather. They're going right after that girlfriend. Yeah. All right. Thanks to both of you. Thank Steve, you. Steve, Heather, thanks. Benjamin? A former gynecologist at the University of Southern California facing more than 50 years.